Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. Ecclesiastes. Chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. The title of the message is Life of Vanity. Life of Vanity. Life of Vanity. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. The Bible says, The words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. What profit hath a man of all his labor, which he taketh under the sun? Brother Caleb, can you please pray for the message? Amen. Amen. Life of vanity. So what is vanity in the first place? You want to know what vanity is. You know, vanity is a thing that is useless and without profit. And it is in vain. When you say something is in vain, it's useless, worthless, right? If it is in vain, it must be connected with self-love. So anything you do out of self-love, it is vanity. It's useless, worthless. But this world is all about self-love, right? People move by self-love. Politicians move by self-love. They love to see their faces. And after every commercial, they say, this message is approved by so-and-so. I don't care if it's approved by you. I don't care if it's approved by, you know, anybody else. I mean, what matters, right? To them, it's all about self-love. A lot of unsaved people, their life is all about self-love. But unfortunately, a lot of Christians fall into that trap as well. As a Christian, if you live a life of vanity, I mean, that's really, really sad. Especially when you know the purpose in your life. Right? You're supposed to bring glory to God. I mean, your goal is to have a right relationship with Lord Jesus Christ. And if you're missing all of those, your life becomes vanity. Your life is worthless. I mean, can you believe it? If someone tells you, you are worthless. I mean, that is pretty low blow, right? But it's just a huge blow. If someone says, you're rich and successful in the eyes of the world. You know, you, you have a million-dollar mansion, you have expensive car, you have a, you know, good family, you have good education. But preacher comes up and tells you, Man, you have nothing. You're worthless, right? And you're useless. You know, I think people hate to hear that. When someone says, you're useless, right? People get into an argument, right? And especially, you know, married people, I don't know, you get into argument, and you know spouses will tell each other, husband and wife, like you're useless. You know, that probably ticks you off, right? Yeah. You know, if it doesn't, you're really useless, right? <laughs> I mean, it should move you something, right? So, but we're talking about Solomon here. The preacher we're talking about is Solomon, the son of David. Yeah. Talking about Solomon, he had the wisdom of God. I mean, he was the richest person. He had everything, right? Including 1,000 wives. I mean, he had everything. His conclusion is what? All is vanity. I mean, all the fame in the world, all the materialistic things in the world, riches in the world, all the women in the world, 
Anything that he ever wanted, he got. And he says what? All is vanity. Amen. I mean, tell that to education system right now. I mean, they'll kick you out right away, right? Tell that to, you know, your work. Tell that to anywhere you go. People say you, you're crazy, right? But according to the word of God, all is vanity. When you do it out of self-love, when it's apart from God's presence and approval, blessing, and power, when it's apart from Lord Jesus Christ, this preacher says, all is vanity. That's why, you know, even when you're at work, you know, we all work, right? We got to make our living. You do it for the glory of God. I mean, you don't do it to just please your boss. You don't do it to, you know, make you stand out from other people. At the end of the day, you know, everything that you do, you do it for the glory of God. Then it doesn't become useless. But when you're doing for your own glory, when you're doing to stand out, when you're doing to bring yourself, you know, more fame and status, at the end of the day, it becomes worthless. It's like hot air, right? It just disappears. It's like a vapor. It just goes away. So that's why as Christians, you and I have to be very careful of self-love. And it also comes with it is self-pity, right? Don't live your life with self-pity, right? Man, I should have been born into a millionaire family. I mean, kids should never have that kind of thought, right? They're like, I wish my mom was a millionaire. I wish my dad was a millionaire. Then you might have never gotten saved. Yeah. Your family would have never gotten saved. Many cases, right? And you're like, oh, you know, blah, blah, blah. At the end of the day, those things are all vapor. It just disappears. Yeah. Yes. Right? They don't bring you true joy, happiness. And people who live in vanity, they never have peace. I tell you that. You will never have peace if you're in vanity, right? To me, if you're using, you know, non-King James Bible, including New King James Bible, right? Yeah. Useless. Amen. Yeah. Your life is full of vanity. Amen. That's why people, if, if they don't have King James Bible, they're in vain. You're useless. Yes. Worthless. What are you going to bring to the table? Right? right? They changed so many words in the book of Ecclesiastes yeah. so that they could fulfill their own desires, right? So if you have any doubts about the Word of God, if you have any doubts about perfect Word of God, and if you're not using it even though you know King James Bible is the perfect Word of God, then you're living your life in vanity. Amen. You could do whatever you want to do for the so-called God that you believe in. Because God of your Bible is not God of my Bible. No. God of your Bible is the devil. Yes. God of your Bible associates themselves with Catholics, devil's crowd, right? Yes. All the translations that came out of Alexandria, Egypt. Amen. I mean, don't get mad at me. Just see what the Bible says. Right? Too many people live just a vain life. Worthless life. As Christians, you and I have that peace, right? Why? Because number one thing is that we trusted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Amen. That's how you could have that peace. Right? At the end of the day, you could live a worthless life as a Christian, but your life in itself is not vanity. Why? You trusted Christ. You're going to see the Lord one day. You're going to go to heaven. Right? Yes. So, if you trust Christ as your Lord and Savior, your life is not complete vanity. Amen. If you don't trust Christ as your Lord and Savior, life is complete vanity. That's it. Right? I mean, I'd rather have you know, a little bit of you know, peace. And that peace is not little if you trust the Christ. Amen. Even if you're living in sin as a Christian, even if you're the backslider and you're the coward Christian, you could have that perfect peace that you're going to heaven once and for all because you trusted Jesus Christ. Let's go to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Romans chapter 5, 
verse 1. The Bible says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So you and I could have perfect peace. Why? Because of our faith on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Did you have to do anything to get saved? No. Did you have to go participate in sacraments? Did you have to go out there and, you know, feed the poor? Did you have to give money to the church? Did you have to do this prayer so that, you know, evil spirit will fill you up and you start speaking in tongues? No. By faith, you just trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior the best way you knew how. That's how you're saved. Amen. That's how you could have perfect peace. I didn't have to do anything. I just trusted Christ. That's why I know I could go to heaven. And people question you. You can't know until you die. Well, the Bible says I could know for sure. Amen. Are you better than God? Yeah. I always wonder how, what kind of mindset brings you to where you think you're better than God, even though his word is telling you exactly what he says. Who are you, right? I mean, I don't care if you're president of the United States. I don't care if you're, you know, Musk, Bezos, or everybody. If you're contradictory to the word of God, you're wrong. Yeah, that's I it. mean, yes. what else is there to it? Let's go to 1 John. And it's our, you know, one of the most strongest you know, verses of our assurance of salvation. Let's go to 1 John chapter 5, verse 11. So if you have trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, not trusting anything else, then you should have this peace. You should have perfect peace that if I were to die right now, I'll be in heaven. If I were to die right now, I won't burn in hell. 1 John chapter 5, verse 11, the Bible says, And this is the record that God has given to us, eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son has life, and he that hath not the Son of God has not life. Have you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. I mean, is he in your heart as your Lord and Savior? The Bible says you have eternal life. Woo! Not me who's saying it. Not nobody saying it. God said it Amen. in his word. What so. more? Evidence do you need? It's a, you know, crock out there. It's false sense of assurance if you think that, you know, in a dream, Jesus has to tell you you're saved. You know? It's a really, really a farce when you have to see the sky after the rain. You see these clouds and it's telling you that you're saved. It's not. Life doesn't work like that. You don't put your trust and evidence in the things of the world. Amen. You, put your, I mean, you put your trust in the Word of God. Yes. Perfect Word of God. Incorruptible. Yes. You know, good old King James Bible. Yes. Verse 13. So this is the verse I always use when we're witnessing. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. I mean, did you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior? Amen. And then, yeah, the Bible says, that he may know that he eternal life. God said you could know. Amen. God wants you to know. Thank you, Lord. I mean, why wouldn't he want you to know? Yeah. Right. I mean, he's not into Calvinism. Amen. Right? Uh, he wants you to know. I mean, I, I mean, we have Brother Calvin who came from Calvinism. Like, where am I going today? <laughs> right? Did God choose me today to go to heaven or hell? I mean, Obviously, my pastor don't know. He doesn't even know where he's going. Yeah. I can't believe how you could witness to people when you don't know where you're going. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's no power. Yeah. It's like someone, you know, just for example, right? Someone who never got into a certain college, right? And then act as if someone who's in that college. Like, just do as I say, you know, you, you get in there, you know. There's no really, you know, power in it. No. Man, that's why you're no better than, like, politicians. Mm -hmm. Just throw everything out there. You know. There are so many people out there, they hear so many junk. And they also hear some truth in it. And then they just mix it up. Right. 
and they just throw it out there, throw it out there. That's why, you know, main question is if you were to die right now, do you know for sure where you're going? If you have, if you think, I think so, that's not a good answer. Right. Yeah. Right? How, how, what does that mean? That means that some part of you doesn't think so. Right. right? But you know for sure 100%. That's, salvation is something that you should never take any gamble on. One to the gazillion zero, don't take chance. Right. Because hell is eternity. Yeah. Yeah. Once you're in there, you're going to be burning there for trillion years. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to burn after trillion years. You're going to burn for all eternity. Fools will take that chance. The fool has said in his heart, there's no God. Amen. I mean, if you know there's God and you follow even your conscience, God's going to lead you to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And many of us here, we heard that gospel, and then we trusted Christ. And if you ever ever doubts, you know, just go to First John five, right? He says, "I could know for sure." Yes. Yeah, that's what Bible says. Trust what Bible says. Don't trust what I say. Don't trust what your mom and daddy says. You know, don't trust what TV says. Definitely don't trust what the media says. Right? Yeah. Trust what the Bible says. Right? Then. We, if you get that out of the way, right? How is your life, Christian, today? I mean, do you have peace throughout your whole life? Obviously, you have peace as a Christian knowing where you're going after you die. But the other part of the peace only comes if you have right relationship with Lord Jesus Christ. It only comes if you have been resolving your sin problems. It only comes if you're living in the will of God. It only comes if you're filled with the Holy Ghost. And people, you know, always ask, what does it mean to be filled with the Holy Ghost, you know? Is it speaking in tongues? No, it's not speaking in tongues, right? You know, is it saying something in vision? No, you know, is that something I have to feel? No, forget about feelings, right? Amen. Facts only, just yes. facts, right? Yes. Being filled with the Holy Ghost just simply means that you let the Holy Spirit be the decision maker of your life. Amen. That's it. You just let the Holy Ghost just make decisions in your life. You give your decision-making control to Him. Right? You just let the Lord do all the decision-making. You know, don't go before Him. Right? You let Him do everything. That's why you wake up in the morning. First thing in the morning, you pray. Lord, help me to have a spirit-filled day. What does that mean? Let this day be living under your will, let you make all the decisions. You know, that's where like all the Nehemiah prayers just comes naturally, right? Whether you're at work, whether you are at market, whether you're at gas station, whether you're anywhere, you know, you ask. You pray to the Lord for every little thing in your life. That's where prayer without ceasing just comes in. It's like kind of real to you. But for those of you who doesn't live a life like that, who doesn't pray when you wake up, who doesn't read the Bible when you wake up, you don't care about relation with Lord Jesus Christ, you will know. Yeah. You're living life of vain. It's useless, worthless. The last thing I want to hear from Lord Jesus Christ at the judgment seat of Christ is that, you know, you've been a worthless Christian. I mean, I die for you. I shed my precious blood for you. Yeah. I lived inside of you, right? Holy Ghost was sealed with you. Yes. You had the perfect word of God. You had local church. You were in the ministry, opportunities. You didn't do anything. Mm. Then you become a worthless Christian, useless Christian. And don't get offended. You and I live many times during the year as a worthless Christian. Amen. How much time you do you waste per day? A lot. I mean, if you're not doing anything for Lord Jesus Christ, then you're wasting your time. Amen. Right? I mean, don't fool yourself. You sleep for eight hours, 16 hours. I mean, that's why everything you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. Then it's worth it. Whether you're, again, whether you're studying, working, having fellowship with your family, friends, or anything, do it for the glory of God and do it as if you're doing it to the Lord, then it's worth it. But if you're doing for yourself reasons, selfish reasons, then it's not worth it. And what's the opposite of not worth it? I mean, what's the you know, opposite of worth it? You know, useless, worthless. 
So these are some of the things that you do makes you worthless Christians. I'll just go quickly. First thing is selfish living. Selfish living will categorize you as a worthless Christian. You live your life just to fulfill your desires and lusts. I mean, isn't that the way the world's telling everybody, right? Forget it. That's our, I mean, our children is a little bit better. You know, they're growing, right? But if you go outside, you, you, you're at any, any market, store, public place, kids are ruling yes. the parents. I mean, the kids are screaming their lungs out. Mom, give me that shoes. Give me that T-shirt. Give me that toy. They do, you know, temper tantrums everywhere. Yeah. I mean, back in the day, they get a good old whipping. Amen. Yeah. Nowadays, you go to a child protective service, so be careful, parents, right? right? And then you get brainwashed by a public education system. Yes. Right. Yeah. Try to take things out of context with the kids, right? Did your daddy, you know, abuse you? You know, did he say something mean to you? Like, oh, yeah, that means abuse. Okay, tell me everything. And the kids don't know, yeah. right? Here's a cookie for you. Oh, yeah, give me a cookie. I'll tell you everything. <laughs> you know, that's type of society. They manipulate children. Yes. That's why we live in this society where you are the king. Again, you're not the king. I'm not the king. Amen. You know, Brother Richard loves it, right? We're less than nothing. Amen. With Isaiah, we're less than nothing. You have to always remember that. I always have to remind myself. Yes. And I'm like, less than nothing. Because if I don't think like that continuously, I start thinking I'm something. And then when I'm doing something at work or anything else, ministry, I feel like, wow, I've done something good. Then, you know, the pride gets into me. And then I have to, like, take a step back, you know. And I have to remind myself and get right. Hey, man, you know, you're like nothing. Just thank God that God is using you yes. as a tool. That's it. Secondly, you know, your life is life of vanity if your dedication is to pleasure. Right? Man, isn't that the whole what the world is all about? You live your life for pleasure, right? That pleasure encompasses everything, not Jesus Christ. Some people get pleasure out of, you know, Doing drugs, yes. taking pills. Some people get pleasure out of making a lot of money, right? Some people get pleasure out of seeing other people suffer. Some people get pleasure out of, you know, movies, music, you know, you know, inappropriate relationship, you know. If your life is dedicated to that pleasure, it's vanity, right? Yes. Amen. Anything away from the Word of God glorifying Jesus Christ is vanity. But you got to check yourself. If your pleasure comes from some type of addiction, then that's all vanity. Yes. Right? That's why people are addicted to drugs. That's why people are addicted to a lot of, you know, cheating, affairs. People are addicted to gambling. And I'm not talking about non-Christians here. Non-Christians is just given. Yes. Unsaved people, that's what they're... Their life is all about. Right. They can find any other purpose in life, no peace. Right. They don't even have truth. What do you expect from them? Yeah. Right. So they're going to go after women, men, money, drugs, everything. Yes. But as Christians, why are you going through or why are you addicted to those things? That's right. right? I mean, too many Christians are addicted to pornography. Yes. I mean, whether you like it or not, you are. You liar. I mean, a while back, Brother Del Grande preached about it. Man, the place got very quiet. And he preached about that. He preached about, you know, affairs, you know, Facebook and everything. You know, that's all worthless and useless. Amen. Amen. You're just breaking God's heart. Yes. You're breaking your loved one's heart. Amen. What is it? That pleasure lasts for a season. Just a little bit. And then it disappears. But after it disappears, you got to reap what you sow. Mm -hmm. That's right. Everything that you've sown, you have to reap. That's law. 
That's God's law. That's what I'm most terrified about. Everything that, even before I've gotten saved, everything that you've sown, you're going to have to reap. There's no other law. God's law, you reap what you sow. Don't think that, oh yeah, I'm saved. Your sins are forgiven once and for all. But the actions and deeds and sins that you committed before you got them saved, you have to pay for it. That's why just you think that you were a druggie before you got them saved, and now you got them saved. You think that you're blown up, all those you know, brain cells kind of suddenly all regenerate. You become like a sane person, smart person. No, it doesn't work like that. You reap what you sow. Yes. It's just that as Christians, we beg for God's grace and mercy. Amen. So that you reap a little bit less than you're supposed to. So what are you addicted to today? It's all vanity. Yes. It's worthless. It's not worth it. Think about it. Amen. If it's worthless, that means it's not worth it. You have to get rid of it. Yes. Your love of money, you got to get rid of it. It's a, it's a thrill, it's a little bit. Look at all those millionaires and billionaires. They're never, ever happy. They have to get another dollar. They have to get more and more and more. And they're the most miserable people in the world because I don't have the most or I need to get more and more and more. As Christians, why are you so obsessed with money? You're, all your life is about money, 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 money. Don't get me wrong. You and I need money to survive. But what is it? Root of all evil is what? Love of money. 1 Timothy 6.10. You are just like Balaam. You're just like any of these false preachers out there. Using God's name in vain. Right? So work hard. I never said stop working hard. But you can't love money. You just do your best. Live a balanced Christian life. Do your best at work. Do your best at home. Do your best at church. Just Live a balanced life. Amen. If, if you're spending too much time trying to make money, you're living an unbalanced life. Yes. And it's worthless. I mean, I mean what, what, what's that going to do to you? Right? Oh, so I, might, I made so much money, so I upgraded my house to, you know, Beverly Hills. <laughs> so what? I mean, I'm going to have a bigger mansion thousand times, million times better than you in heaven. Amen. Right? Don't try to be rich in front of me, right? It's not going to work, you know? I mean, I have so much waiting for me, you know? Amen. I mean, your imagine can, imagination cannot even comprehend, no, sir. right? But Christians get so enamored, right? Don't be that person. Oh, there, look at that billionaire. Oh, I love that person. Oh, look at that doctor. Oh, man, I want to be a doctor, and I want to be just like him unsaved, God-forsaken, you know, blaspheming person. Right. Like, oh, you know, that's why it's very dangerous. Parents or older siblings. If you're little children and other family members, their role model is someone other than people of faith, right faith, you've done something really wrong. I can't have my child say, Daddy, my role model is Einstein. He was so smart, right? Or like, oh, or some Hollywood celebrity, right? <laughs> What's wrong with you, right? I mean, I've heard, you know, Calvary Chapel crowd, who's your role model? They said Saul. Like, they say Saul is the, their role model because he was big, eight feet tall, and he was first king of Israel. He was strong. They don't even know he's burning in hell. I mean, that's how, you know, people are so blinded. Yes. So, you know, let's see some final words of some famous people. You know, Cardinal Borgia. I mean, we have a cardinal here. Let's start off with the cardinal, right? I have provided in the course of my life for everything except death, and now, at last, I am to die unprepared. Oh, this guy's been in that Catholic church for a whole time. He goes, I am to die unprepared. Is that a good thing to say, right thing to say, if you've been in a religion all your life, and you goes, I am unprepared 
to die. Well, that's the type of religion people are in. Yeah. And Boylan says, oh, God, have pity on my soul. Oh, God, have pity on my soul. If you're saved, you don't have to say such a thing, right? Amen. Because your soul's going to heaven. Yes. Amen. I mean, we listen to some classical, right? Ruvik von Beethoven says, too bad, too bad, it's too late. That's sad. Wow. It's never too late. As long as you're alive, you can't get saved. Amen. And we have this pervert here, Sigmund Freud. The meager satisfaction that man can extract from reality leaves him starving. I don't even know what he's talking about. What a cuckoo. Yeah. The meager satisfaction that man can extract from reality leaves him starving. That's worthless. I mean, yeah, you're starving. Yes. I mean, you're going to starve in hell. Amen. I mean, Philip III, king of France, said, What an account I shall have to give to God. How I should like to live otherwise than I have lived. Man, all these people are full of regrets, right? Full of regrets. Luther Burbank, he's the agricultural pioneer. Luther Burbank goes, I don't feel good. I mean, he's about to die. He goes, I don't feel good. Yeah. But a lot of people are like that. I mean, think about these final words of these people. You know, they're scared. They don't know what to do. Tolstoy said, even in the valley of the shadow of death, two and two do not make six. It's just crazy, these philosophers. Yeah. They still thinking, you know, like, wow. Vincent van Gogh said, I shall never get rid of this depression. Yeah, you'll be depressed, burning in hell forever. Right. Oh, this one, if you know some Hollywood history, James Dean, he says, my fun days are over for sure. Yeah. Your fun days are over because you're going to burn in hell forever. Amen. Think about it. Those are, you know, some of the last words of you know, this unsafe people. Yeah. Does that give you any assurance? Does that give you inspiration? Does that give you encouragement? That's why many, many celebrities, famous people, people with money, you think they're happy. They're not. Because they look back at their life. They're like, man, I made all this money. I accomplished so many things. You know, I went to so many schools. I have all these degrees. What's left? Vanity. And you know what? They, they are left with three choices, usually. Alcohol, pills, drugs, and suicide. That's a lot of them just kill themselves. Right? They're like, OK, I wanted to become a billionaire. I wanted to become a you know, richest person. I accomplished everything. What do I do now? They got nothing else to do. That's why a lot of these young kids, celebrities, you know, they made a lot of money very quick. They live a prodigal life. And if they don't get saved, they look at their life and like, you know what, I'm 25. I have everything. I have nothing else to live for. No purpose. So what happens? They just blow them, they blow their brains out, jump off the bridge, apartment, and they just die. That's how vanity works. And as Christians, if you are dedicated to pleasure, that's how you're going to end up. So many Christians commit suicide. Why? Because they dedicated their life to pleasure, and after they have this big hole in their heart, when it comes to peace and satisfaction, they don't want to go on. And even if they hear a good preaching and the word of God to get right, they're like, I can't go on anymore. I mean, you should never be that person where you have such a self-pity on yourself that I can't go on anymore. I mean, what kind of loser talk is that? I mean, Lord dropped every single blood for you. I mean, he took the sins of the world. He's the one who should say, I can't go on. But he bared it all for you and me. I mean, who are you to say, Lord, you know, I'm just a you know, little tiny dot in this universe, you know, that I can't go on. You know, it's baloney. I mean, that's what devil wants you to think. And going quickly, you know, if, if you are coveting what you do not have, your life is worthless. It's full of vain, right? So don't covet what you do not have. You know, don't covet material things. Don't covet human beings. And don't covet those things, right? 
That's why commercials are so bad. Yes. You know, they always have this car commercials, you know, material stuff, you know, everything. They want you to want something that you can't have. And then you start coveting. And your life is in vain if you want to become famous. Right? Don't try to be famous. Right? And especially as a Christian, well, how do you want to become famous, right? You want to be a pastor? <laughs> do it. <laughs> I mean, oh, you want to be a, like a famous, you know, I don't know, YouTuber <laughs> in the Christian community? Or do you want to be known in this congregation, right? Do you want to be like a Bible teacher? Or, you know, you want to be like leading certain stuff? You want people to recognize you? Oh, I want to be a preacher's wife or something, right? Don't try to become famous. I mean, that becomes worthless. It leads to your own selfish living. And, you know, what else makes your life, you know, living in vanity? You know, labor and work. If, work. if you're just a workaholic and you don't do anything else, I mean, it's vain, right? I mean, you got to have a balanced living. And... Hoarding money, right? You're, you're, you know, you should give back to God, right? What he has given you, you know? I mean, New Testament, tithing and stuff, you know, still is applicable, right? You know, there was tithing even before the law. Yes. What's given, I mean, if God gave you stuff, you got to give him your first fruits, right? Amen. What's the hoarding money is going to do to you? Sometimes you and I, don't understand. It's God who gives and it's God who takes us away. Amen. You could try to save it in, a, you know, in your own room because you don't trust bank, you know. Have a safe lock, you know, with the, you know, 10 different security system, you know. And then you have to have a, like a 100 word, you know, password, right? And suddenly, you know, there's, you know, fire and everything blows up. And then none of those security were able to save your possessions. What are you going to do then? Right? That's such a wasted time. Right? Be generous about it. Be a cheerful giver. Right? And it's all vanity if you put worldly wisdom above God's wisdom. Right? Your final authority always should be the word of God. I mean, don't go to, like, Dr. Phil, don't go to Oprah, and don't go to, you know, all those, you know, famous psychologists, psychiatrists, talk show hosts, and say, oh, I want to know what they talk, think about my relationship, you know? I want to know, you know, how I'm going to become rich, right? No, answers are all in the Word of God. Why do you have to go outside the Word of God? Then, you know, quickly, we're getting to the end. And then how can you live a life without vanity, fulfilling your life, right? You have to be in the truth. What's the truth? The Word of God. Amen. And you've got to try to seek truth all the time, right? If you're unsaved, if you want to get out of the life of vanity, you have to find the words of truth, which is the Word of God, right? Go to John 17, 17. I mean, it will tell you. You go to the Word of God. You get saved through the Word of God. And don't waste time messing around with other things. If you want to live a life, fulfilling life, less empty life, less life of vanity, you've got to use your time wisely. You know? Amen. Christians, you have to buy time this day and age, right? Don't waste it on needless stuff, worthless stuff. Yes. You know what I'm talking about, right? You know I mean, worldly movies, you know, worldly music, you know, worldly acquaintance, worldly things, right? Yes. You know, just get rid of it. Amen. I mean, if you're going to stay in those things, your life will never be fulfilling. You always have that empty spot. Uh, I mean, I'm never telling you not to meet unsaved people. You do so that you can witness to them eventually if you haven't, right? Yes. But... They become your best friend, and all you do is just meet together, you know, never talk about spiritual things, always talk about worldly things, right? Yeah. And then you neglect the Word of God, you neglect prayer, you neglect church ministry, you neglect church, you neglect your family. Man, that's wasted. Yes. Life. 
That's worthless, right? And if you want to live a you know, fulfilling life instead of living life of vanity, you have to fear God and not man. Amen. Don't fear God. I mean, don't fear man. Fear God. If you fear man, that means you're fearing man and your own circumstances. You're fearful of your environment. If God tells you to do it, just do it. Then it's not going to be in vain. But because you're afraid of man and you don't do what God tells you to do, you know you've been a useless person, useless Christian. Man, all the mistakes that I've ever made, all the sins that I've committed, all the times that I chose you know, my flesh, the world, and the devil instead of God, I look back, man, that's vain. It's been useless. Worth it. I didn't get anything out of it. Only thing I got out of it is heartache, wasted time, you know, you know, broken relationship with Lord Jesus Christ, you know, I mean, everything else. So fear God instead of man at all times, and your life wouldn't be in vain. And lastly, be ready to give an account to God about your life, yes. which is judgments that are Christ for saved people. Then your life wouldn't be in vain because everything that you do, you're thinking about your account yes. that you have to give to God, right? The thoughts that you always have, you have to give account to God. Yes. It's not just outward, you know, appearance and actions. Because would you want to be, you know, known as a Christian whose life is full of vanity? Or would you want to be someone whose life is full of giving glory to God, closer relationship to God, having, you know, great testimony? You and I, our life is short. Yes. The Bible says life is like a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. You and I do not know when we're going to vanish. Don't think that I'm going to live until 80, 90, 100. Today might be the last day. Yes. Then you have to live today like the last day, yes. looking for that appearance of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Then every part of your life, whether you're witnessing, whether you're praying, whether you are you know, taking care of your family, whether you're working, you're going to live as if Lord's coming back today. I mean, I always get amazed by Martin Luther, right? You know, someone asked him, and that person was not living life in vain. He's living life for Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Hey, if you knew the Lord's coming back two hours from now or today, what are you going to do? I'm not going to do anything different. I've been living my life, right? As if the Lord's coming today. Amen. So if I'm gardening out there, that's what I'm going to be doing. If I'm reading, if I'm out there doing something, I'm going to do it. Because my heart is already waiting for the Lord to come back. Amen. And where's your treasure going to be? Where, where are you setting your affection today? Right? You got to set your affection on things above, yes. not on things of the earth. All these things will one day just burn up and disappear. Amen. You want to have something that's lasting. And you want to throw some crowns yes. at Lord's feet. If you live life of vain, you won't have anything. It's like you're just throwing the air. <laughs> Man, that's embarrassing, right? Probably you don't even want to pretend. You know? You're just probably lying down crying and crying, you know? Yes. Just ashamed of what you haven't done for the Lord. You know, how worthless and useless you've been as a Christian. But you never have to stop or continue in that path. No. Stop whatever you're doing right now. Stop the sins that you're doing, all the pleasures and addictions. Just get right with the Lord and move on. Amen. That's all you got to do. You fall in, you say, then get up. Yes. That's what the Lord wants. The Lord wants you to just start over. That's it. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's the best you know, grace that God has given to us yes. and mercy. Even though you and I are failures many times, God says, you know what, son? You could do it again. Amen. Get up and do it again. Yes. Let's pray. Dear Father, I mean, Solomon had everything for God. He had riches beyond anybody. He had wives. He had wisdom. But at the end of the day, under the sun, he said, it's all vanity. Heavenly Father, help us to realize that if we, anything that we do, any thoughts that we have, if we don't do it for your glory, if we don't do it 
based on our fellowship of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, if we don't do it based on the Word of God, it's all just vanity, Lord. It becomes useless. It becomes worthless. It just becomes hot air, just disappears, Lord. Help us to just reflect and rewind and just look back at our life and current situation. And if there are any part of our life where we're living in vanity, help us to get right with you, Lord. You know, confess our sins, get right, and just start over, Lord God. Because we all want to be found faithful, Lord. We want to be a found faithful servant, Lord God. We want to please you and bring more glory to you instead of more heartaches, Lord. I pray that you'll bless everyone in here and those who aren't saved, Lord God. I pray that today will be the day of their salvation, those who's listening as well, Lord. Because getting saved is so simple, Lord. You know, you said that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth's confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Lord, if there's anyone who has any doubts about where they're going today, I pray that they realize they're a sinner on their way to hell. Believe that Jesus Christ came down from heaven and died for all of our sins on the cross, shedding his precious blood. That washes all our sins away once and for all, believing that Jesus is God. And knowing this, with repenting heart, changing your own ways and turning to God, who could only save you from hell, receive Christ in their heart as their Lord and Savior. If you are not sure where you're going today, wherever you are, realizing that you're a sinner on your way to hell, having repenting heart, believing Jesus is God, through this prayer, receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and get saved from hell. Dear God, I am a sinner. Please forgive all my sins. I believe Jesus is God. I believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for all my sins, shedding his precious blood. The best way I know how, with all my heart, I receive Jesus Christ into my heart as my personal Savior and Lord. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you have prayed this prayer with all of your heart, you have nothing more to worry. The Bible says, but as many as received him, to then give you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name. You become child of God once and for all. You could be a good child of God, bad child of God, but at the end of the day, you're a child of God and you're going to heaven. Now, let's just make sure that our life will be a good testimony, become the light to this world. I pray that you bless the rest of the services today and above all, even so come Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.